Hello, good morning. My name is Venus O'Hara and welcome to another video. I'm about to go and hit the gym, but before I do, I, short, I thought I would share a video about how I deal with toxic people. This is a video I've wanted to make for a long time and it's very unrelated to my normal videos about sex toy testing. But as you can maybe imagine, as a sex toy tester, I have attracted some unwanted toxic situations um, to my life. So I wanted to share with you how I deal with different types of toxic relationships. For example, <coughs> excuse me, I'm talking about toxic friends, toxic co-workers, toxic relationships, toxic family and trolls and haters. Yeah. Anyway, so let's start with um, trolls and haters. So they are the least important, I would say, on, on, all, on, on this list. Um, for example, I think I think that if you exist online in any shape or form, you have to accept that there are going to be trolls or haters. And what I have observed over the many years that I've been online is that whenever a troll comment comes in, you can almost guarantee, it's almost guaranteed that there's no profile picture. So, so you've got to think about who are these people really? And, and I think, um, I think I like to take well, I don't even read them now, but I just take it all with a pinch of salt. And instead of getting upset about any comment that you might receive from a stranger, I think you have to see it as a test. I do anyway. I just think, you know, if you really want to have a lot of followers, a lot of traffic on any any platform, you have to expect there's going to be some negativity that comes along with it. And I think that trolls is almost like a sign of success, which is a bit ironic, but, and that's all it is really. So... So yeah, I don't don't read them is is a good is a good um, strategy and just don't take anything personal. I know some people, I'm friends with some other influencers who try and go into their comment sections and clean it all out, so it looks like everyone is supporting them. Whereas I think you have to in life in general, even if you if you're an influencer or not, you have to let go of what other people think of you. It's incredibly incredibly liberating. Yeah. Um, another thing about um, trolls and stuff, I mean, I have a few videos that have attracted a lot of troll comments and for that reason I don't read any of the comments on my YouTube channel. So if you want to contact me and ask me a question about anything related to sex toys, orgasms or anything, then email me at venus at venusohara.org or you can add me on Instagram and send me a direct message at at venusohara. Okay, next next toxic uh, relation, well, next toxic whatever, toxic, hmm, toxic friends, well, unfortunately I have lost um, a few friends on the way on my journey of being an orgasm activist, I think just the fact that I talk about sex um, just makes a lot of people uncomfortable, it makes people look at their own sex life, and I've had some very negative and negative situations with some friends who just think everything I'm doing is scandalous. And I remember one friend, in, ex friend in particular, who told me that I shouldn't tell people about what my job is. And I just thought, why shouldn't I? I'm not doing anything wrong. And I realized that I just maybe should change. I should just be hanging around with people who do accept and encourage me. So I think it's really important to have friends around you who accept and encourage you whatever you are doing in life. I think it's always good to have some constructive criticism. And I have a friend in particular who, who, um, who when she doesn't quite ex agree with what I'm doing, she tells me in the most amazing diplomatic way. So there are always ways to communicate concerns to your friends without being, uh, without criticizing them, I think. So, so yeah, for me, um, I just try and avoid people who, who judge me negatively and, and I try and surround myself with people who do accept me and encourage me and to be who I really am. Okay, next, next type of toxic relationship, toxic co-workers. Well, I'm in a very fortunate position that I am a freelancer, so I don't have to, I very rarely have to deal with um, co-workers or colleagues that I don't like. It's very fortunate. I remember years ago I used to work in offices and that was not the case 
it was very tense and I remember having arguments with people about the air con, you know, these some women were always cold, I was hot, so there's a lot of, I've been used to a lot of conflicts in offices and, and stuff in the past. But fortunately, um, I can pick and choose who I work for work, and work with, so that is perfect. However, I remember a couple of years ago, I had a situation where I was collaborating with a really big um, media outlet here in Spain, and I'm really used to people, or my um, all my collaborations, a lot of my editors have let me have complete artistic control over my work and that's fantastic because I have so many ideas and people are just very accepting of, of them in a work situation. However, there was one woman who kept censoring my ideas and, and rejecting my ideas and then and nitpicking and it just, um, I don't know if it was genuine or if it was just, I don't know, I just didn't feel um, every time I saw this woman's name in my inbox, it just made it just put me in a really bad mood. And it seemed that everything I did was never good enough. Um, and I just realised that there was a lot of just silly things going on um, with this person. So I took a risk and I decided to no longer um, no longer have this collaboration. So I spoke to someone who was above her, another editor. And I told them that I wasn't really into this collaboration anymore. And I negotiated a better deal with another collaboration I had with that person, not, not, the, not the nitpicker. So I actually um, ended up earning more money on a different collaboration without this toxic person in the middle. Because so, I really believe that, you know, you have to take the weeds out of the garden. You know, initially I was worried about, you know, saying no to work is not something a freelancer does normally, it's like, give me the work, give me the work, so you don't really know when the next next work is coming in. But I really believe in, in life that if you um, take the weeds out of the garden, then the lawn will be greener and everything will be more prosperous. And that's exactly what happened to me. So I just took this toxic collaboration out of my work and then everything else became more abundant so that was fantastic another situation i had that was similar to this um, was about maybe 11 12 years ago um, i was in a toxic relationship actually and instead of just saying no goodbye and just breaking up with him like i probably should have done i was feeling really weak and you know, I was feeling very weak emotionally, even though the relationship was emotionally toxic. And I remember I was working um, in a real estate company, this is just before I, I became a blogger, and I had six months salary, and then after the six months, there's gonna be no salary, and I had a two bedroom apartment to pay for, and I was thinking, oh my God, this is a completely new situation for me to be in, because I was always used to having a salary every month, like, like most people. I had a boyfriend at the time who, um, you know, had quite a lot of money and I've never, never been a kind of girl who looks for guys with money to, to pay for my stuff but he said to me one day, don't worry if you, if you haven't got any money because I've got money for my flat and your flat and whatever so I just, that gave me a little bit of um, tranquility, <laughs> fake tranquility, let's say but I still knew I had some kind of backup plan, you know, so that was nice for a while but then the relationship got even more even more toxic and I just I decided that instead of relying on this person for maybe paying my rent one one month if I couldn't make it, I thought I would rent my spare room to this six foot tall Brazilian guy. <laughs> and that's what I did. And I knew um I didn't didn't just do it for the extra cash. I did it because I always also wanted to kind of break up the, the routine that I had of my relationship because we spent most of my time in my flat and I knew that if I had this six foot Brazilian there it wouldn't be possible anymore so gradually the relationship would die out in a, in a way that was maybe more manageable for me at the time. However, the Brazilian, it sounded great having this six foot Brazilian at home but we, I couldn't stand him actually. And um, I wasn't vegan then, but I was vegetarian and he used to eat this awful meat from a really cheap supermarket that's like uh, in a square form and you're thinking, which part of the pig is that? You know, we're talking the really, the cheapest, cheapest, most unethical meat ever. And so I used to wake up in the morning 
and smell this awful cheap meat in his toasty thing. Oh my God, it was awful. And there were lots of other things that did my head in about this guy as well. So as I was getting to, towards the end of the six month period of, of salary in my, in my real estate job, I took a really, really risky decision. I broke up with my boyfriend and I kicked the Brazilian out. <laughs> I thought, I don't need any of these men. I mean, why, why was I thinking so small, you know? Out, 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 out. And soon enough, I was fine. I was um, paying for my rent on my own, didn't need a boyfriend, didn't need a toxic relationship, and did not need a toxic flatmate. So it was wonderful, and I paid all my bills on my own. It was difficult, but it was way better than putting up with these guys. <sighs> Yeah, oof, oof. still remembering that. Okay, tech, toxic relatives. Okay, toxic relatives. Well, unless something serious has gone on, um, I think anyone who's been toxic to you in your life should be avoided. But sometimes there are people who make you, they don't give you a positive feeling, but you are connected somehow. So you can't avoid them 100%. For me, as, as a sex toy tester, and not just that, but also having a very unconventional life, I've had to endure lots of negative comments from family about why I'm not married, or why I don't have a mortgage, or why, why I don't have a conventional job, or stuff like that. And I think there's um, some people can be genuinely, genuinely concerned, but sometimes these comments are can be like unsolicited advice. It's, it's very patronizing and the people who've been giving me these uh, these bits of unsolicited advice are definitely not in a position to do so. In fact, I could be giving them advice about finances and 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 money and money and um, and and professional advice. But um, so for me now, I just um, avoid talking to people like that because I know there's going to be. A point in the conversation where some um, condescending comment comes out, and I know that's going to happen. So I just um, make sure that all my all my contact with these this type of person is going to be in text form, <laughs> so that they can't say anything to annoy me. Mm. Because it's there are some people in your life that you can't um, shut out completely, and maybe you don't want to shut out completely. So I think it's. Um, I've learned the art of caring from a distance and the same applies to some toxic friendships. Instead of completely ignoring people, I just don't spend my precious time with them. So I think you can you can still be in someone's life or in their remit, but not not have day to day or contact with them and they don't they don't need to know everything that's going on in your life. So it's good to have contact but at a distance. And that's something that's really really been helpful for me to actually realize that because sometimes I felt guilty sometimes about shutting someone out from out of my life I just think am I overreacting or I feel guilty is it because I can't forget some things I mean you need to forgive and forget in life but also you need to have self-care and I've realized that saying no to these toxic people is a is a way of self-care and that's really important it's really important because this, this, these toxic people can affect your your neg uh, your mentality in a really negative way. So I have a very, very simple test when I think of a certain person coming into my life, or if I want to meet them, I think, does that person energize me, or do they drain me? And that's it. It's just a very simple question. It's just to connect with your intuition and your feelings and think, how does this person make me feel? And if it's someone who energizes you, then you sh they should be in your life. And if it's someone who drains you, then they shouldn't be in your life or be in your life a very, in a very limited way. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you find this video inspiring. This is not what you should do with your toxic relationship, but relationships. But this is something that's definitely helped me to live with toxic relationships or <laughs> in a more and not let them affect me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'm going to hit the gym now and see you next time.